2020-2020. Go live. Okay, so now it's going live. And so, I might come back and watch the camera. So we have our phone conference that is live. Oh, there's one more thing to do. <laughs> Michelle, let me do one more thing. Michelle, please let me do one more thing. As those that are on Facebook are joining us live, the phone conference is live. And so that everyone knows, there's no one is up there that I can print off uh, sermon notes, which are right here as we are in the back of the sanctuary. Um, and your stuff is over there. And I know your mom is freaking out because I'm talking and we're just as is. And so, bring this up. as we are a few minutes away. Is that still scrolling? We will see if this is still scrolling. Looks like it's not, Michelle. So uh, we'll just leave it as is. Okay, just leave it as is. You do see the very first words to your uh, song list, right? Okay. So once again, we are a few minutes just before uh, church. And so, uh, um, Regathering in the building for the second day, okay? Second time, second Sunday. We have those that are joining us on Facebook, just so everyone knows. And what they're doing is they're seeing the front here as we will have the sermon broadcast live to them. There are those, especially those in our congregation, who are not gathering with us and uh, because of safety. And this place, in fact, our cleaning crew was here just yesterday because they love our church, because they are a part of our church. And Angelus and her family were um, making sure everything uh, with the bathrooms downstairs, the bathroom upstairs, uh, everything is sanitized. Everything in here has been cleaned and sanitized. And so we are re uh, recognizing our space and keeping our physical distance. Some of the other things that we are doing is I do know that there will be individuals on our conference call. We've given out the phone number to um, those in our congregation that cannot make it out so that they can call. They are hearing the service just as I speak right now, as talking to them on the phone. Um, it is good to have them with us. I'm just kind of giving you tidbits before we get into it. We're about five minutes away from our service. And so just to remind you that um, we are doing uh, our face masks. We're, we are not going to... As a church that is so friendly of shaking hands and with one another, we're not going to do that yet. We have not handed out bulletins yet. Some of the reasons that we're doing this stuff is we are actually following guidelines that have been passed down to us from um, a lot of medical people in the uh, church uh, thought process, which is really good. So they know what we're talking about when we talk about bulletins and stuff like that. Um, the CDC has... Uh, has actually said things in such where, an example, when you touch a pew, you're probably, you're, the odds are so low of you catching anything. A door handle, so low of catching anything. So we have gone beyond that and sanitized. The doors are open um, to where you can come and go as you please uh, for service. And so we're just trying to do everything to protect and, sh and, and watch over God's children, who we are as we gather together. And so we're making all these things available. Um, I'll remind you at the end of the service also um, that uh, we are also not passing the offering plates during an offering time or anything like that at this moment. And so at the back of the sanctuary, the offering plates are um, at the pew. And so you can, then, if you'd like, toss in uh, your offering. Uh, that would be great, greatly appreciated as we do ministry and support ministry. Uh, the other thing is always be checking Facebook for uh, Culver City Church of God Ministries. That's our page. Or go to our website, culvercitychurchofgod.org.org. Or call the office 
to always be updated on information on what is happening within our church. Meaning this, it, uh, we're going to be having Sunday school very soon. Um, the, 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 all the restrictions are being lifted very quickly. It seems like we're being cautious and careful, but eventually we will meet downstairs for Sunday school and worship service, okay? Which kind of extends the time that you are here uh, within the building. We're not there yet, but we will soon, and we will let you know when that takes place. And then uh, uh, down the road, we will give you a cup of coffee. <laughs> just let's smile just a little bit. Down the road, we'll give you a cup of coffee. Down the road, we might give you a donut, whatever. As we uh, gather downstairs for Sunday school and then upstairs for worship. We, however, we are meeting on Wednesdays at 6.30 for Bible study. And we just started a phenomenal series in uh, the book of First John. Book of 1 John is talking about how to be a witness, how we are, how people see you, who you are. And it starts off, first of all, with your relationship with God. The only way you can be a witness for God is to know God. And so we're in the book of 1 John as we start off on Wednesdays at 6.30. And eventually on Wednesdays, we will reinstate Kid Zone. And you know what? So many people are all concerned about the, the adults doing this and the adults doing that. And it's, I'm going to say, ridiculous because you don't even look at a kid and understand that they need just as much as what you need or maybe even more as we are growing up. So within the weeks to come, Kid Zone will be enacted. These are just some of the things that are taking place within um, the congregation here this morning. As we are, we're still not quite there, we want to give everyone a chance, especially those that are coming on the conference line, uh, to uh, join us for worship in just about one or two minutes. So just a reminder, we're watching our physical distance. We are, um, and I love it, just I'll remind you what is a common sense thing. Wash your hands, cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze, keep a little bit of distance between people, and if you are sick, let us pray for you, but let's not spread anything. It means stay away, okay? Just common sense things. We, I hope you heard that one tidbit. Sometimes you, you hear all these things, whoa, let us pray for you, okay? And uh, we'll actually have a time of prayer in uh, a few moments as we get ready to start our service. Just to let you know in advance, the prayer, the, uh, a time of coming to the altar is always available. Like I said, everything is clean. The other thing is if you do not want to come to the altar and pray, you can also use the front the front row of pews to sit down and pray. You're more than welcome to do that. And as always, because we always should be in constant uh, conversation with our Lord and Savior Jesus and have the work of his Holy Spirit within our lives, if you like, you can also pray in the pew you are sitting in. Guess what? God knows where you're at, and he knows all about you. So these are the things that we have that are taking place in our service. And so welcome to Culver City Church of God. I'm Pastor Brent. And we're going to have Pastor Mark come and lead us in worship. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, much we need thy tender care. In my pleasant pastures, feed us, for our disciples prepare. 
Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. We are thine, do thou befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear thy children when they pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear thy children when they pray. Thou hast promised to receive. Us, poor and sinful though we be, Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to thee. Early let us seek thy favor, early let us do his will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our bosoms fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us still. I was out on the broad way of sin and despair. Crushed beneath my burden of sorrow and care. My constant companions were trouble and doubt. Till Jesus reached down and lifted me out. He lifted me out of the deep, my replay. He settled my feet in the straight there. Wandering afar from my Savior and home, fainting and weary in sin I did roam. I needed a hand to turn me about. Then Jesus reached down and lifted me out. He lifted me out of the deep my replay. And flooded my soul each day with his grace. I was building my home on the dry shifting sand, casting my lot in a cold, barren land. Were doomed now for AI, were Satan shout. But Jesus reached down and lifted me out. He lifted me out of the deep miry clay. He settled my feet in the straight, narrow way. He lifted me up to a heavenly place and flooded my soul each day with his grace. I've started 
for heaven, my heart filled with sun. Wandering is over, my sins all are gone. Through Jesus' own blood, cleansed within and without. Oh, praise his dear name. He lifted me out. He lifted me out of the deep, miry clay. He settled my feet in the straight, narrow way. He lifted me up to a heavenly place and flooded my soul each day with his grace and flooded my soul each day with his grace. with welcome it is so good to have each and hey 20 feet type the 20 feet's good enough just so you know <laughs> and I want you to actually hear me um, I'm not going to go through a ton of announcements I did um, early on in the service just kind of reminded people of uh, we are doing physical distancing a lot I thank you for the face masks um, as we sing and worship together because we do things like I was out I didn't take mine off till I got way up here from you guys. I was singing with my face mask on. And so, you, you know what? Don't want no one, you know, I'm telling you people, they'll, they'll watch your videos, they'll listen to you, they'll freak out or whatever. That, that's all right, because we're still doing what we need to do to worship and follow um, some guidelines for now. And so it is good. Of all the things, welcome. It's so good having you guys with us um, in service, worshiping together. Um, down the road um, as closing comes, we'll um, uh, honor God with tithes and offerings um, as we can, uh, as we leave the building, you can, you can drop off your tithes and offerings in the back. Prayer requests, I'm telling you this in advance during this time frame, so as uh, you're taking notes during sermon or anything like that, um, if what God impresses upon you, um, man, I need prayer for this, or I know individuals that need prayer, there's in the in the pews, everything sanitized, just so we all know, in the pews are prayer cards. Um, if you'd like to make a donation, um, there are offering envelopes. If that prayer card's not big enough, uh, do a page two or just uh, uh, take those offering envelopes. And because we'll, we'll get, we got more. And if you need to write, just write what you need um, for prayer requests. And we have other people praying during that time. Uh, in our time of welcome, at this moment, we're not shaking hands and uh, rubbing shoulders or anything like that. But um, I know last week I was cheesy. I made you look around and wave. I'm not going to do that again. I just want us to know that as we do look around, we see our brothers and sisters that have gathered. We see the opportunity to worship together. And it should be a welcome feeling. You know, what takes place of circumstances does not stop us in joining our hearts together and, and worshiping God together in a place where we have regathered. And I'm going to tell you this, that it's probably going to be one of the last times that I use the word regather. We had been away from the building for so long, yet we still had services online. We had services on our conference call, and we still um, managed that way. Um, and I set out uh, devotions and stuff like that, trying to get us to not only to just stay connected together as we do coming into the building. So uh, probably in the next week or two, it will not be we are regathering. It will be welcome as we gather together, which is today also. I'm just kind of watching the word phrasings as we go along. I do want you guys to feel welcome as we are a family. One of the great things about the Church of God um, that, that we speak of is God, His Holy Spirit joined us together in worship. And I'll tell you this um, as I'm welcoming you. Um, I'm not sure about all the churches in the area. As I was driving to pick up some kids, uh, my kids, and bring them to church this morning, I'm always looking, and there's a church just on the way to my house and they had cars in their parking lot. And so I began to pray right away, God, allow your anointing to be on them as they, whatever they're doing in that building for worship, 
praise God and let them enjoy their Sunday of gathering. However it is, I, I don't know, but I do know that there are cars there um, for the first time that I have seen. And so, you know what? God's kingdom is huge, but in this time frame, we welcome each and every one of you. In this time also, we are going to go into a time of prayer. And I will remind you that if you would like to pray at the altars, um, as we're going to sing a couple of verses of blessed quietness. And so uh, uh, you can, uh, if you would like, come gather at the altars. I, like I said earlier on, um, we have the front two pews also available if you'd like to come forward and use that as a sit-down altar and pray there. Or you know God always hears you wherever you are as we pray. Some of the things that we'll be praying for this morning are individuals that um, need a healing touch. Um, we continue to uplift uh, our secretary, Phyllis's husband, Ray. Um, he did have another fall. Um, but we continue to pray for God's strength as uh, uh, he is a man that loves to stay within his home. And so uh, we pray that strength is brought to him to where he can continue to do what he loves um, with his strength. We're also praying for um, uh, Connie, uh, Connie Brown, who is uh, Sister Pinky, Brother uh, uh, Lawrence's uh, sister that has a broken ankle she's recovering from, praying for healing for her. Um, she will, she's in rehab right now. She will be coming home soon. They are preparing for that um, to, to have her in the condo right next to them as they um, have healing there. Uh, pray for my Connie. Um, Connie, um, we're praying also for her family, her mom and dad. Um, there seems to be uh, uh, just, you know, Connie's just worried. She hasn't seen her mom and dad in a while. She's worried about them um, in some conversations. So Connie and my youngest, uh, Christian, and my youngest daughter, Lauren, they got in a car and started to drive to Illinois to uh, visit uh, with her mom and dad and just to kind of encourage them. Uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit later in service. But pray for their traveling as uh, God's uh, protection is over them and then we pray for um, uh, I, we had uh, um, uh, Trini uh, we're praying for your your son George and uh, so he just uh, needs uh, God's prayer and so it is so um, we come together joining with those if, if you have a prayer request and it's not spoken and, and you don't want to say anything which is fine but here in the church what we love to do is we know god knows every heart he knows that even your prayer requests um that's deep within you and even the ones you so you have not spoken them but if you have a prayer that's so deep on your heart and you would like us to pray and know that you have one not not to know what it is but we raise our hands so that we know that you need prayer. And so God's anointing will be on prayer with you. If anyone else has a prayer that they would like us to pray for, you can just raise your hand and, and I will remember you. Um, and I was, uh, look around. There are people in the sanctuary that have needs. And so we will continue to lift the body of Christ up as we pray that, his, um, that you will have uh, an understanding of uh, the direction of God with your prayer request. So I'm going to ask Pastor Mark at this time to come and lead us in our worship, our prayer song, as we get ready to pray together. are flowing like a river since the comforter has come he abides with us forever makes the trusting heart his home blessed quietness holy quietness bless assurance in my soul on the stormy sea Jesus speaks to me and his pillow cease to roll. 
everything is turned to gladness all around this glorious guest banish unbelief and sadness all is perfect peace and rest blessed quietness holy quietness bless assurance in my soul on the storm and sea jesus speaks to me and the billows cease to roll Let us pray together. In these moments, could we stand as we pray, please? Let us stand together as we pray. God, we are so grateful for the opportunity as a people to come together and to worship you in song, to bring our hearts in tune with uh, one another as we lift our voices in praise to you. God, we ask that in this time frame that your uh, Holy Spirit will just con continue to move among us. Uh, and be, being a part of us, God, may we be reminded that it's not just about a building, but it's our very spirit that we gather together and worship. We ask, God, that you'll also hear our cries, hear our requests. We continue to uplift uh, uh, individuals that are uh, on our minds during a time of crisis. We pray for our hospitals still and our doctors and nurses and the hospital staff. We pray for firefighters and the police and, and EMTs, everyone that is involved, even down to uh, our pharmacy and the pharmacists that are uh, handling things that are coming through uh, the, the counters there, God. We ask an anointing of your Holy Spirit in these situations. We uh, can read it in uh, papers or in, in the news on things are still happening. And God, we just ask that you'll um, allow them to have a protection of health, especially as they are doing their job to help others. God, we ask that you'll be with some of our requests that are so dear and personal to us as we hold close to those within the congregation. We ask a, 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 a healing touch on individuals that have been mentioned, Ray and Connie and uh, my Connie. And I know that there's more and more uh, on our hearts of individuals that need your healing touch, God. And so we ask that your Holy Spirit be uh, at work um, at work in which we see, God. We also ask for patience and understanding in the time frame that you have laid out for our prayer request uh, to be known. God, we ask that you'll be with those that are traveling, especially uh, I know for my family. But I know as the summer comes, there are a lot more that are traveling, more of our friends and families that are traveling, God. And uh, we just pray for a watching out of. We pray for uh, clarity and uh, peace of mind for those that are traveling. Just to make things easy, God. We ask that you'll be with us as a people. As we have gathered not only to worship you, but may we have our hearts in tune for the words that are to be spoken. May we be a changed people when we leave these doors. May we be one who takes in what you have for us in such a way that it, it just brings a greater understanding in our journey with you. God, you are so good to us. And so we praise you for what you've done. God, we praise you for what we know uh, that you are God. Lead our steps in the path that is ahead of us day by day. And so, God, we ask that you will help us to see your anointed directions. We thank you for this service, God, specifically. Your anointing on your people that are here. We rejoice and worship you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. What was next? Yeah. 
This what? In his love and kindness. Let me <clears throat> Savior hath trod, let me follow so close by his side. For by trusting in him I am happy and free. In the fold of his love, let me hide. In his love, let me hide. In his love, let me hide. For by trusting in him I am happy and free. In the fold of his love, let me hide. Let my heart e'er be fixed on my treasures above. Let the pleasures of earth fade away. For there's nothing so lovely as Jesus to me. Let the nair from his cup go astray. In his love, let me hide. In his love. Of his love, let me hide. Do you ask why I love him the dearest of all? Why so freely I yield unto him? It is because he has loved me and died on the cross. My poor soul lost in sin to redeem. In his love, let me hide. In his love, let me hide. By trusting in him, I am happy and free. In the fold of his love, let me hide. It is blessed to serve him and do his good will. For so precious to me is his love. Let my talents and time I'll give it to him till he calls me to meet him above. In his love. In his love, let me hide. For by trusting in him, I am happy and free. In the fold of his love, let me Thank you, Pastor Mark. Um, for me especially, it is a, a joy. Because for all those, it was like 12 weeks um, where uh, there was uh, intermittent where uh, Pastor Mark and Cindy would come up and uh, we were broadcasting downstairs um, on, via the phone conference and on Facebook. And so, uh, and Christian and Lauren, they stepped up also um, playing in worship uh, with Pastor Mark for these years, and then they stepped up, and there was weeks where they would meet us in worship, and uh, it's just a joy to know that there are those that are uh, using their talents. That last verse, um, I think it was last night, I was kind of looking around um, at uh, the songs we're singing and listening to them from other organizations such as the Gaithers. And uh, uh, Bill Gaither always has those homecoming videos and stuff. And years ago, they had, I can't even think of the gentleman. It was actually, it was the NAC, which is the National uh, Convention. And at that time, I believe it was in Anderson. That's how far back it was. It was in Anderson. And they had this gentleman come up and uh, sing, especially that last verse about giving my talents and stuff so much. Anyways, Pastor Mark, thank you for helping and leading us in worship together. Last week, I hope you were uh, inspired. Um, some of the things that we do as we gather for worship is we look for opportunities to worship. We look for, I, I, at least that's, especially like I was saying about those weeks, I was always, you know, you look, man, 
Um, in fact, I've heard conversations of individuals, uh, are you having your doors open yet? Or uh, how are you doing it and stuff like that. So you were actually looking for opportunities to worship. Always looking through, and I would hope that you were in such a position that you would have the thought process of every opportunity to pray. Um, I tell people, especially if I see them, then it reminds me to pray um, not only for them, but especially if they brought a need to me, I continue to pray. And I say that in the sense of uh, pictures or anything like that, because I scroll very fast through Facebook sometimes, and some of my uh, friends are saying things, and as my friends are saying stuff, it reminds me to pray for them. You know, because first of all, they're my friends. And this is how we should have some of our prayer life be. As for individuals, as you talk about things, okay, you begin to add those to your prayer, add them to your prayer list, every opportunity. And so with that, um, uh, we, we look for those things. One of the things, especially in the, in the sanctuary, I, I pray as God leads in words. If I'm going to give you a, um, a thought process that encourages you, that strengthens you, that builds you up, that gives you the tools to do some of the things that you need to do, I'm, I'm always praying ab about that. Never to be my words, but what God would have. Last week we talked about Paul. Paul getting into a, a, a boat. And uh, to be shipwrecked. And as I told that story about being shipwrecked uh, last week, there was things that stood out, at least for me. Paul was inspired by God. Early on in that story, he was telling them, hey, we shouldn't leave. They're like, oh, yeah, we should. And as they left, then the ship got into the storm. It was going to break up. It was going to hit rocks. It was going to sink. And Paul still never stood down. God had inspired him in such a way to tell them. And if you, remember, if you were here last week and remember, the story went where not one person lost their life on that ship, even though it broke up. Even though they lost everything, they, not one person lost their life. Why? Because Paul told them, this is what God has said. If you follow these, these steps, not one person will die. And God was right there with that. Some of the things last week that, that stood out for me also was um, in the, the writings. It was in Acts chapter 26. In Acts chapter 26, there was a verse that went like this. But God has protected me right up to this present time so I can testify to everyone from the least to the greatest. Paul was saying that as this portion right here, God is with me to where what you see as storms, what you see as the ship was about to be lost, what you see as possible death, that's the worst. As you see that, God is with me. And not only is he with me, but Paul's so cool. I'm going to continue to tell you the stories of God, of what he's doing right now. Then also in there was, as he was telling them, it was what? Repent. Repent of your sin and turn to God. In that verse where it, that talked about repenting and turning to God, it said, and prove that you have changed by the things that you do. And so as I was doing, uh, going through that story last week, it's leading up to me on this right here, where it is our personal journey. See, Paul was always being changed. He, Paul, Paul was a zealot. He was, man, he knew scriptures and stuff, and, and he was brought up uh, uh, knowing, but what he was knowing was not God, because God, ready, on the road to Damascus, did what? Changed his journey. And when he changed his journey, then it, it ended up being, think about it, very quickly, 
that journey changed. Where Paul's heart was changed down the road to Damascus, what happened? He meets, he meets up with Ananias, and this is all by God's direction. I want you to go to here, and I want you to meet this man. And guess what? God was already with uh, Ananias. I want you to meet this man. And can you imagine, because Paul was one out to imprison the Christians, to end Christianity. He had the paper in his hand to do it, and his heart changed. His journey changed, and guess what? Ananias' heart had to change. This man could no longer be my enemy. This man could no longer be one that I had to hide from. And so Ananias takes the blind man, Paul, in, and then they began to con have connection and conversation. And guess what? More of Paul's journey changed. The scales fell down from his eyes and he could see. And then I love, see, in the book of Acts, um, if you were to go to those stories of that changing of Paul's journey, Ananias went to the church and said, yeah, he's here. <laughs> and can you imagine a church that they're, they're wondering if a spy is going to come in. They're wondering if, if the man who wanted to imprison people was going to grace their presence in the church setting that they were going to be in. There had to have been a fear. Let's not, I mean, because I know today there's people that live in fear. And so there possibly was a fear of people of this man, Paul. And what's Ananias done? He stands up with those people and he says, you know what? I'm going to tell you what God has told me about this man and how we must have connection with him. Kind of like Paul in the ship that was going to break up. Here you have Ananias standing up in the church, uh, in the church people saying, we must connect. This man has stuff from God for us to change our journey. Immediately it changed Ananias' journey. Going back to that shipwreck, one of my favorite verses was in chapter 27, verse 25. So take courage, for I believe God it will be just as he said. See, from Paul's changed journey and had a conversation with Ananias and began to preach and teach to those people that he met all the time in leading up to that shipwreck, we have the greatest of statements. I believe. And that should be your personal journey change also. It's one thing to, to grace a few. It's another thing to have your heart changed by God Almighty. And believe is the easiest, in my opinion. Because if you begin to look around, you will see God at work. Think of, just think about it. You will see God. First of all, you can do this thing. Look around at all of creation. You know, to see the moon at night, Woo, especially a full moon, and, and, and no marine layer. Man, it is, it is so cool. It brings me back to my childhood, because what? There's the man on the moon. Do you see the face? Now, as an adult, I go deeper. Man, do you see God's creation? He has created the moon in such a way, on, such, on search, certain nights, you see the beauty of his creation. Last night I went outside the house and uh, I had mowed the lawn earlier that day and um, uh, I, I saw a doc my doctor this week and uh, he's wondering what I'm doing because um, I, you know, with the virus I, I had uh, not been able to see them and I, dr I did, I changed some of my eating habits and stuff and I actually have lost some weight and I was a little bit afraid to tell him how because I have major, major back issues. Okay, I know it. I know what it is. And so I push mow my lawn. Not, not, and I don't mean with a, a gas motor that's doing all the work for me. I make the blades spin <laughs> with that push mower. And so I'm mowing the lawn. And, that, and so I, I try to take in some exercise. And so I'm going to tell you this. In God's creation, there's sometimes like, God, why did you put that dandelion right there? Because that dandelion, it's like, it's like spreading the gospel, okay? The dandelion, when it matures enough, <laughs> it spreads. And then all of a sudden you have more dandelions in your yard. And so, but, so I'm like, with, with God, you can think I'm crazy. I talk to God all the time, man, because I, I hate dandelions. 
But then I'm gonna tell you what, I went out last night and I don't even know what they're called or what they are. We have these long stem, like a green fern, like in a bush, okay? And then out of that, these tall flowers that are white, and then the petals kind of droop over when they open with a little bit of purple in the middle. And there was probably 50 of them under the tree. And so last night, I looked at those, I thought, wow, I did nothing to see that beauty or to make that beauty. God did. Yeah, I, I know something, well, you know, so-and-so planted it. That's right, well, guess who? God made that so-and-so who planted it. This is how broad your thought process begins to go as you see what God does and it changes your journey. And I, I'm gonna say this, if you take a personal look at yourself and you look at the dandelion, uh, dandelion is the worst one to use. Just ugly, ugly weeds. Let's take that one. Thistles. You, 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 uh, there's two that pop into my mind. Are you ready? Have you ever stepped into the grass with no shoes and you hurt your foot? And you wonder what that sticky, pointy thing is. And it's a tiny little burr, I guess you would call it. A little round thing sticking in your foot. Or oh, we used to have this tree and it would drop stuff. It's like it's seeds on the grass and they were sticky. They stuck to your car, they stuck to your shoes, they stuck to your pants if you rolled around. It, and it... Ah, oh, let me move on. It, it got me off track right there. I am so sorry. I, I'll tell you what. Even with the thistles and the birds in life, God is there. That's what it is. Even with the things that you would consider just so nasty, God is there. And when God is there, this is my point, when God is there, he changes your journey. He teaches you how to fertilize your grass so those birds are no longer there. Right? He gives you intelligence to know that the seeds drop in the spring, so don't walk over there under that tree in the spring. Why? He changes your journey. And he changes your journey for good if you allow him. And it was the same thing with Paul. With Paul, you know what? I, with Paul, I want to go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, and I'm only going to be in the area probably to verse 12. And you're like, well, how is this kind of like Paul's journey? Paul, who is a changed man, has a deep desire to connect with others. So he starts writing these letters. He writes these letters with divine purpose. And in writing them, I as an individual who take the scriptures, and I, and I will emphasize again always, make sure you read your scriptures. If you want to know how God changes your journey or how he walks with you on your journey, see, maybe change journey is too drastic for you. God walks with you on your journey. And as he walks with you on your journey, you need to take in directions. You need to take in where you, you will see in the scriptures where bad things are happening and God changes things. So read your scriptures. Romans ch chapter 1. Let me jump down to verse 5. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them, so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. Paul's journey. Paul's journey is what? So that he can have conversation with people. And so, and, and um, he is beginning to make us realize that there is no breaking down of barriers. Excuse me, I'm saying that wrong. There is no building up of barriers. There's no separation. There's no this over here and that over there in this case, or 
that people belongs over there, and that people belongs over there, and that people belongs over there. That is to be broken down. One of the beautiful things that, that we teach is unity. Unity in Christ brings unity in life. If you'll allow God to change your journey. And so Paul is trying to bring unity. And as he brings unity, he tells them that we all together are to teach the Gentiles. For what? So that they will believe and obey. But don't think it's just for them. It's for us too. And not just believe and obey, but give glory to God. See, that's the beautiful thing. When you read Paul's writings and his writings to the people, his writings to us, it's not a pat on the back. It's like, I want you to know the Most High. And you give him glory. Hasn't stopped today. We are, ready, ambassadors. Stay in Romans chapter 1. But as I read this word, he's talking about authority, and he's talking about what he's supposed to do. And then you have other writings in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He goes so deep to say, you, 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 me, are ambassadors. We're called to be his ambassadors. For, and in that second chapter of, uh, uh, second chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says this, for God was in Christ reconciling the world, that means everyone, to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. I hope, as I know I went off to 2 Corinthians, but understand, it is a journey change. God comes in, he makes you a new creation. That new creation doesn't just sit down and do nothing. That new creation is to tell others. And God has placed his Holy Spirit in each and every one of you who says, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ so that you can tell your story. You can be the vessel that God uses in that opportunity, in that connection. What? So you come to know God. Not just you, but those you come in contact with. Come to know God. Back to Romans chapter 1. As I told you that about us being ambassadors. If you were to hear last week in Ephesians, it talks about us growing. Yeah, our roots are growing in God. So on our journey here, we have to come to this understanding that it is all about us. Because in verse 6 of Romans chapter 1, it says, And you are included. Among those Gentiles who have been called to belong to Jesus Christ. I'm writing to all of you in Rome who are, ready? If you're highlighting or underlining, this is part of your journey. You are loved by God. And you are called to be his own holy people. I love Romans now. <laughs> I love Romans all the time. I love Romans because it begins to say who we are in a journey. I am a holy child of God. And you can be too. As you are in connection with God because he died for you, his son, for this connection. So that you too can be his own holy people. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Please hear this journey in these closing, these few moments. Your journey has grace and peace. Your journey has this uh, uh, holiness with God. Your journey has this connection with God. Your journey has this inspiration that you give to others to know God. Let me continue on in verse 8 of Romans chapter 1. Let me say first 
that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. Paul, for all of you. Paul began, he is trying to emphasize to us this unity that we have. Why? Because your faith in him is being talked about all over the world. When I'm talking about journey, I'll, that would be one of my highlights. As Paul's writing to these people, okay, did you hear that? Your faith in him, in Jesus Christ, your faith in the Savior, your faith in his Father, God, your faith in the Holy Spirit that has been given to you, your faith is being talked about all over the world. That's okay. <laughs> that is, it, it, it's two things to me. First, it is the coolest thing ever. Your faith. When people see you, they, there's that person right there. They're a follower of Jesus Christ. How do I know? Because everything that they do proves it. Everything that they say proves it. Being talked about all over the world. Are we, are we, are we, uh, Is your faith even being talked about at home? So I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. Just so we have an understanding. God places on you what he has for you for everyone. But it also starts, it starts with the one right next to you. Verse 9, God knows how often I pray for you day and night. I bring you and your needs in prayer to God, whom I serve with all my heart by spreading the good news about his son. There's so much in that, that little section right there. First of all, pray, 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 pray often, day and night. You know people that have needs. You know them. Pray for them. You know, I, I know there's times, because I, no show of hands, but have you ever had this opportunity, I mean, this time frame where you're like, oh, man, I should have been praying about that. Oh, man, I should have prayed about that first. I'm already in the situation. I should have prayed, and I knew I was going into the situation. I should have prayed about it first. You know what? God, God knows us. He knows the mistakes and slip-ups that we make. He knows when we're not talking to him, but he also knows everything that's about us. So rather than going such a, a, a huge fall down depression of, oh, I forgot to pray about that, pray about it. Pray, 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 especially those that you know that need prayer. Most of all, serve God with all your heart. Telling everyone about his son, verse 10, Romans chapter 1. One of the things I always pray for is the opportunity, God willing, to come at last to see you. This is Paul. Talk about unity. Talk about connection. Paul's telling them in a letter, just so you know, I am asking God constantly how much I want to see you, how much I want to visit you. I'm looking for every opportunity. Dear Lord, make that opportunity so visible that when it's there, I can walk through it and come and visit those people. That's how that letter goes. For I long to visit you. Why? Not just to have lunch or dinner or pick something up. I long to visit you so I can bring you some spiritual gift that will help you grow strong in the Lord. To grow strong. And that's why, you know what? I don't have a lot to give. But I will, I will there are areas that we can give that will give spiritual growth. That when we come in contact, as we have come in contact this morning, there are things for spiritual growth. And I said earlier on that one of the things is Sunday school. Sunday school is not just, see, right now you guys are just getting Pastor Ben who's reading Romans 10, putting in a few 2 Corinthians, uh, excuse me, Romans chapter 1, and he's kind of going verse by verse as he's going down. And, and so, you know, we get that from up here, and he's telling us about tithes and offerings and prayer, and we worship in song. And so it's kind of like just this gathering. We're not really getting a, a lot of input. We're not getting an opportunity to do our part. We're just taking it in, and, and I hope you're being inspired. See, I'm not downing it. 
I want you to be inspired on Sunday morning to go out and be what God has called you to be. But I also want to let you know that Sunday school is the greatest opportunity to come in and go, wow, we're in this section of scripture right here, and we're going to go into detail. And I, you know what? I actually have a question about it. You know, uh, very quickly, very quickly, I have a question about sanctification. See, there's always big church words that are flying around. I have questions about holiness. I have a question about unity. And we have the world that's all messed up, but how can you talk about unity? I have a question about that. How can you take the scriptures of unity and, con and connect it to the world? Let's talk about that. Sunday school is the opportunity not to debate, not to argue, but to be inspired and gifted deeper with your growth. Wednesday night Bible study is the exact same thing. Wednesday night Bible study, exact same thing. The other one would be individual connection. Because guess what? When you take, when you get what God has for you, either in your own personal devotions or in a Sunday morning service or in one of those Bible studies I'm talking about, or maybe you might even get deep and go, let's gather together with about four or five of us. Let's have our own little group meeting where we talk about scriptures. Let's do, let's do coffee together. Or let's go even a little bit deeper. It might even be you with one individual. That's why I talked about earlier this connection with un, one individual, either so that you can grow more or so that you can help them grow more. So Paul's writing, I want to bring you something so that you can grow strong in the Lord. I want you, is this church here, to help you grow strong in the Lord. Take opportunities of those things, Sunday school and stuff like that. And then in verse 12 it says this, when we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, but also want to be encouraged by yours. Pastor Mark, let me ask you to come up as we're closing. You know, I, I'm reading all this stuff about what it takes to have this journey change, what it takes when a journey change happens. And guess what? When you have a journey change, it grows. So you guys accept it this way. The growing is your journey change. So you grow and grow and grow. And with that, the one of the things that we close with is we get together. As we gather, right now we regather so people can get a, 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 a thought process around, man, I have the opportunity to be with my friends. I have the opportunity to be with others that are worshiping the, the Lord. I, I have, and so as we get together, and, and I know we're all kind of um, told certain things, and so I will say this, mask on, share, share. Why? Encourage one another. As you're walking out this place, you do your six feet, which is real easy to see because Pastor Mark and I are more than six feet. If I talk so loud, he can hear me plain as day. And I encourage him, encourage him. And I know this, uh, you know, he encourages me. I love that script. I take him. He, he didn't know I was going to use him. Encourage one another. And for, this is probably the hardest thing for me. Be quiet for a moment. Maybe they have something to say to you to encourage you. <laughs> That's to me personally, okay? I'm the big talker. Be encouraged. Be one who encourages as we gather together. We're about to sing a song, um, uh, and it's a good one. By faith, not by sight. By faith, not by sight. And as we talk about a, a journey change, your faith is going to take you step after step out these doors, and you already know in your heart right now the things that are on your mind where God can either touch things or you can neglect God and what he has for you to do. Please allow him to work in your life step after step out these doors. As we sing this song, um, uh, just a reminder, um, I'm actually going to, you know, slip to the back. I'm going to stay off to the side. I'm not going back to shake your hands. I felt not discouraged. I just felt like, man, I just missed a good hello.
for a, maybe a, someone wants a big goodbye. I missed it going out the door. So I'm going to stand off to the side, and I'm going to give you a wave. I'm going to say goodbye and stuff like that after we sing this song. Just a reminder, we do have our offering plates. If you have an offering or a tithe you would like to drop in to support ministries, greatly appreciate it. Um, we have individuals also that are on the phone or that are on Facebook. They also donate to uh, um, the ministries, and we are always appreciate those that are giving to the work of the church um, here um, on this corner, it goes to ministry, okay? If you have something to pray for, please drop it in the plate because I get it and we have people praying for, not just me, others praying for those prayer requests as we get ready to leave. I'm going to ask Pastor Mark to come up, sing these verses. Pastor Mark, we have plenty of time. We're going to sing these verses and then I will actually close us in prayer after the song so that you know that you can get up and uh, be dismissed, okay? I'll see you in the back. Thank you for these moments. And as we stand to dismiss and walk out these doors, may it be our faith that is encouraged by you so we can encourage others. May our faith be in such a way that we have every step led by you. God, we thank you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit upon our lives. And may we be that light on our corner and beyond. 
In Jesus' holy name, amen. I'm low tech. We're a high tech society. Right? Yes. It's not a dream of growth. Uh huh. Oh, 
footnote in it, just what it says. The devil can't tell that it's you or God that he's looking at. If you have his little armor on. He goes, wait a minute. I gotta run, I gotta be